It's raw, it's sometimes rough, but for many, many people, it's just very, very real. In a world where almost everything, including music, seems to be taking a digital form, vinyl records are still alive. In fact, they're going through a bit of a renaissance where what's old is definitely what's new. I was very fortunate. I was there when it happened. I'm old enough to remember it and old enough to live it. His name is Robert Dukowski, but he's better known as Bobby D. Until about a year ago, he was the owner of this record store and stereo repair shop in Pembroke, where it's all about turntables and black discs. People don't realize one thing. Vinyl never went away. Vinyl is an underground thing. We still have a lot of our vinyl. You have a lot of your vinyl. People said vinyl is gone forever, but it wasn't. It was being played silently like a silent majority. Bobby D says he was a young man when rock and roll was just cutting its teeth. And they'd say, uh, I want you to hear this next record because it's going to be a big smash, okay? And out come Little Richard, a wop, bop, a little lump, a little bam, boom. We laughed. Our stomachs were sore. We never thought this would do anything. <laughs> it shows you what we know. Bobby D spent almost his entire life in the music business. He still DJs an oldies show on the weekends where, of course, it's no CDs allowed. Vinyl is a personal thing. If it wasn't breakable, you could take it to bed with you and put it under your pillow. It's that personal. Tammy Brown and her husband bought this business from Bobby. Now called Doggone Records, she's surprised by who's coming in and what they're looking for. The younger generation, especially the millennials, are coming back and they, they are so interested and they want to learn and be educated about music and where the roots are. So this is, this is something that I think is coming back for that reason. Tammy is an artist. She thinks one of the reasons people are gravitating back to albums is simply the way they look. This is a tangible, I can feel it, touch it, smell it. I can look at it and remember Saturday Night Fever in the movie. And even though this is a soundtrack, the artwork and the covers, it all brings back memories inside where you can see the movie and remember and it just brings back nostalgic memories. It's just wonderful. The jukebox is still cranking out classic hit records at the Music Connection in Manchester. Owner John Benedict has 50,000 LPs and about 20,000 45s for sale. He says business is good. There is a resurgence in vinyl. Uh, it was probably started maybe five years ago, and it became kind of a hip thing for the younger uh, kids and uh, young adults to get into what either their parents listened to or uh, the novelty of what was happening with newer music coming out on record. John says, like most collectibles, what makes a record valuable is condition. An album's rarity is another factor, and it doesn't have to be old to command a good price. John says when CDs started to dominate the market in the late 80s and early 90s, few records were pressed. For instance, the Spice Girls actually came out on record, their first album, and that original album sells for over $100. I think the biggest reason that I got into vinyl is that I want, I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and eventually I want them to know that music doesn't just come from a phone or an iPad or, or something like that. I want them to have something kind of tactile and kind of be a part of the whole process. I don't feel like I truly own the record unless I, you know, can physically hold it, you know what I mean? Rodney Blaze lives in Nashua and is a drummer for several local bands. I think it was just a passion of enjoying music and different types of music. Um, I've always sort of studied bands, like I would take The Who and listen to them, listen to them for a month then the Stones and Zeppelin and just sort of study the drummer. His mother bought him his first Stevie Wonder record when he was a kid. And like many adolescent boys of a certain era, 
Rodney yeah. fell hard yeah. for Kiss. Today, he owns about 10,000 records. Rodney's collection has essentially taken over his apartment. Because I like to go to flea markets and yard sales, so I'm sure that because it's just in me to, if I see something, it, it strikes me, oh, what the heck, a dollar, you know, you know, two bucks, you know, I'll, I'll pick it up, you know, even though I have enough already. There's no catalog, but Rodney says it's all alphabetical and he knows where everything is. Rodney has some records that are valuable, others that aren't, but he says that's not the point. I don't sell things, I just buy things. <laughs> So, uh, no, I, don't, I collect to, to keep, pretty much. I think there's a, a nostalgia for it, and I think that even someone who's younger that's just getting into it and learning about it picks up on that immediately. Wow, someone really cared. Someone went out of their way to do all this. It, it's something that you notice. So, yes, they sometimes skip and crackle, and you need a decent-sized piece of equipment to play them, but vinyl records, it seems, will always have their place. Whether it's the look of the cover, the fun surprises sometimes stuck inside, or just the way you feel when you drop a needle and magic happens. The sound that comes out of that round piece of vinyl is going to be ingrained in your mind forever. Take good care of it.